Brilliant, didn't have the microphone on for about the last 10 minutes. I'm so much better at this now, aren't I? Um, right, hello, how's it going? Uh, it's been a while, hasn't it? In case you've forgotten, I'm that bloke that used to make slightly odd golf videos and now makes videos that are even more odd, probably, um, featuring like talking monkeys. I'd really like to start my own YouTube channel, but I think it's too late. And weird poems. We're not our houses, our clothes, our cars. We're not our bodies, our eyes, our hearts. And bits where I tell you to chuck your mobile phone up the garden. So you're probably wondering what is going on. Um, it's been about four or five months since I made a golf video. And in that time I've had quite a few questions asking, you know, what's happened, why am I not playing golf, why am I not doing golf videos and that kind of thing. So I thought I'd make this video quickly just to kind of explain that because ultimately I've had a lot of people who've been really supportive from the very beginning of my journey and doing videos. So I feel like I want to explain to those people, if anybody cares, um, you know, kind of what's happened and why I'm not doing so much golf and also just to get things off my chest and feel like everything is out in the open. Golf has taken me to some amazing places. Experiences and memories. Mesdames et messieurs, welcome to the Ryder Cup 2018. <laughs> and it's brought me into contact with some fantastic people. Right, so most of you probably recognise this guy, Liam Robinson, the Challenge Tour player. Alright, so let me introduce myself. I'm Sinjin McNair and I'm Rob's coach. Okay, so I'm uh, Danny Burstyn, uh, Golf Lessons Nottingham. And today we're going to uh, do some coaching and, and hopefully get you back to your natural swing. You know, is this on plane? Is that on plane? It doesn't really matter because I know where the club is. So hello, Sam. Hello. How's it 
<laughs> and one or two less fantastic people. <laughs> and I'm Robin Matthews Williams. But the reason I love golf isn't just because of what it's done for me or kind of the places it's taken me. I love the life lessons that golf teaches you that sometimes you don't necessarily get back what you put in, but that's okay because if you keep putting in effort repeatedly, eventually it will give you something back and that will feel all the more sweeter because you know kind of how much you've gone through to get there. Oh my God, I f this game. Why am I such a f prick? Oh, golf. I love the fact that golf is by and large a completely individual thing. So unlike a lot of other sports, you're not relying on anybody else, any teammates to kind of pass you the ball or you know to be in a certain position or to do their job and no one's going to come and sort of tackle you or knock you over um, so it's all on you. I also love the way that golf brings together people of all different ages, backgrounds and abilities like if I want to have a game of football with someone who's nine years old and someone who's 90 it probably wouldn't work out that well but we could quite feasibly have a game of golf together have a good time and in all likelihood I'd probably learn something from the person who's nine and the person who's 90. I love golf for its honesty and integrity, um, probably more than any other sport. You know, it kind of, golf trusts you to basically be honest and, you know, call a penalty on yourself if you've done something that nobody else can see. And obviously, you know, by and large, you kind of count your own score. I know that someone else is there to keep your card, but yeah, golf is a very honest and trusting sport. and. I honestly pity anybody who abuses that trust. I love the fact that in golf you can have a terrible round and hit 85 shocking shots, but you hit that one good shot that goes exactly how you pictured it and it just feels so pure. And that one moment alone is enough to make you keep coming back for more and kind of forget about all the horrible ones that went before and after it. I love playing golf with mates and you know taking the piss out of each other as we go around. <laughs> <laughs> Long boundary. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, absolute nit. That is to sit down. <laughs> but underneath all that we are actually willing each other to do well and I love playing against my dad who never gives anything less than 100% to beat me and is never slow to remind me that he's had multiple holes in one and I've never had one. Cheers dad. And I love playing nine holes on my own on a summer evening um, just getting away from like screens and mobile phones and all the kind of things that are part of modern day life just feels lovely um, you know it's I don't want to get all spiritual about it but I've had some moments kind of out on those summer evenings on my own where it just feels like okay yeah this is where I'm meant to be and as much as it's frustrating sometimes I kind of love how hard golf is so you're swinging a club at 100 miles an hour to hit a golf ball that big into a hole that big that's like over 400 yards away and you've got to try and get it in there in four shots like when you think about that it sounds ridiculously difficult and sometimes it feels ridiculously difficult but there are those moments where it just seems like the most easy and natural thing in the world everything just clicks you don't have to think about it and yeah those moments because you know how hard it is it makes them all the more enjoyable and you appreciate them all the more that suddenly for whatever reason you just feel like you know exactly what you're doing and yeah golf just comes easily i love the mental challenge of golf in the sense that even when things are going really badly, you never know when they're gonna just suddenly turn around. So most of the best rounds that I've ever had have come on the end of a period where I've been playing such terrible golf, like there's been nothing to suggest that I'm suddenly gonna play well. Um, and so again, I guess that's kind of a metaphor for life. They say, don't they, it's, um, it's always darkest before the dawn. And you know, that's a bit cheesy. It probably sounds a bit like a boy's own lyric or something, but there is an element of truth that like you just got to kind of stick with it because you never know when suddenly things are going to turn around and go in your favor and i love the fact that every golfer is on their own individual journey so whether you're trying to get to scratch or trying to win the masters or just to break 100 for the first time 
Like, yeah, obviously we play competitions and you might win or lose those compared to other people, or you might play matches and win or lose some of those, but ultimately the main person you're competing against is you and kind of you from yesterday. So if you make sure that you're better than you were yesterday and you keep doing that day after day, you're gonna be on a good journey. And that really is all anyone can do. So you're probably thinking, well, okay, if you love golf so much, then why have you stopped playing it? Well, fair point. Um, golf for me, obviously, was always something that I kind of really threw myself into fully. Like, I've never really been interested in just playing like once every six weeks, never practicing and just accepting that, obviously I'm not gonna be that great, um, but it's fine because I'm not putting any effort. Like, the appeal of golf for me was always like seeing how good I can be, saying, okay, here's where I'm at the moment. I wanna to get to this level, so what's it gonna to take to get from there to there? Like trying different ways of practicing, sort of testing my potential really, and seeing kind of, you know, can you improve on yourself? Improve on yourself? Um, yeah, seeing what it takes to improve. But unfortunately, at this exact moment in my life, I just can't commit the time that I need to in order to do that. So when big stuff happens in your life, um, it kind of causes you to like take a step back, reflect and sort of take stock of things. So in my case, that was the end of a long-term relationship, but it could be anything, you know, it can be like um, the death of like a family member or losing your job or sort of just any big moment that makes you think, okay, what what's going on here? Um, yeah, so that's what happened to me. And it just made me think, okay, right now I'm 35 and there's stuff that I need to do in my life to ensure, not ensure, but to mean that hopefully when I'm looking back in 35, 40 years time, I haven't got a lot of regrets. And yeah, golf, the amount of time and effort that I'd have to put into it just to be able to say, okay, you know, my handicap is scratch or 0.4 or 0.0, whatever. Um, unfortunately, yeah, that time and effort, I just need to spend that in a different way. So it's not the end of the relationship that's the reason that I'm not playing golf. I mean, I played golf before that relationship. Um, and obviously, yeah, there's no, it's not as if Cat was ever like making me play golf. Um, it's more just, yeah, one of those kind of big moments where you sort of have to take stock. Um, and have a think about, yeah, where you're going with life. Um, and I'm not saying that I will like never play golf. Um, like I'm not, I'm not banning myself from playing golf or anything like that. Like I'll probably in fact play in the next couple of weeks because my membership runs out at the end of March um, and I'm unlikely to keep it just because I won't be playing enough and you know, there's like the money side of it and that kind of thing. So. Yeah, I'll probably try and get out in the next couple of weeks, just once or twice at least, to sort of just, you know, play golf for the first time in months um, before I'm no longer a member anywhere. But yeah, even after that, if I feel like paying to go and play golf somewhere with mates, then I'll do that. Um, and if I feel like making a video about golf for some reason, then I'll do that. Like I'm not, like I said, I'm not banning myself from talking about golf or playing golf. I'm not cutting my nose off to spite my face. But yeah, basically I just can't justify dedicating so much of my life um, purely to something that means at the end I can say, yeah, I'm off scratch. And you know, obviously like with YouTube, I could say, okay, yeah, I'm gonna like focus on golf and try and grow my YouTube and sort of make that like a source of income. But like if I don't truly believe in it, if I don't feel like that is the most important thing to me, then I'm not gonna do it just because it's sort of the obvious convenient thing to do. Um, I hope that has answered like some of the questions. I feel like it probably hasn't cleared things up as well as I hoped. Um, that seems to always happen every time I make a video, I have this idea of like how great it's gonna be and then by the time I've got anywhere near finishing making it, it's nothing like I planned. But um, if you've got any other questions about any of this stuff or anything that I might be able to answer, then yeah, feel free to pop them down below. Um, and also let me know how you're doing. So one of the things that I really miss about kind of regular uploading videos is the sort of interaction with people. Um, so yeah, let me know, are you playing lots of golf at the moment? Are you excited for the season? Have you got any new clubs? Um, or anything that's not related to golf, you know, just how is your life going? 
let me know down below. Um, I do always genuinely love reading those comments, so that would be great. But yeah, I guess uh, in the meantime, that's it. I've got some other videos planned, non-golf stuff, so if you don't mind watching non-golf videos, then obviously stick around. Um, it's hailing outside. What is going on? Yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy some of those other videos. Um, and I'll see you in the future.